Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. I think you're going to love this lesson. I get questions all the time about watercolor underpaintings, and they really can make such a difference and bring forth vibrancy to your pastel artwork. So get ready to have lots of fun and learning. And if you don't mind, go ahead and like this video, comment, I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe to my channel for more free content. And if you would like to become a patron of mine on my Patreon page, it's only $5 a month, which helps to support this channel, keep the free videos coming to hungry artists all over the world, and you get extra content. So come join the family. Now let's dive right into this lesson. This month we've been focusing on autumn colors and in a recent video I did two little autumn tree studies and I chose this study to complete a more serious piece on some sanded pastel paper. Now here's a little intro from me. Please pardon my appearance. Often I just want to paint. I don't want to fix up. All right, here we go. All right, so I have my studies done of my autumn trees and I did learn a lot. I learned that I want to exaggerate color and I found that I really liked some of the magenta colors that uh, I pulled out in the second one here. And so I've got to now determine which one of these I'm gonna do. I started out thinking I would do this one, but I was kind of liking this one too. And I, I like sometimes to not uh, feel bound by the reference image and just use it as a guide. And I think I'm gonna get a little suggestive and have some fun with this one. I think I'm gonna do this one. So now I've got to determine what surface will I use? And that's a question I get all the time is how do you know what surface to use? Sometimes it's just having fun. Uh, sometimes it's for mixing things up a bit. And sometimes in this case, it's so that I can get some luminous color and I think I'm gonna, I'm literally making this decision as I'm filming right now. I think I want to use something where I can do a wet underpainting and play with an underpainting of some vibrant color um, to add some of the more traditional autumn colors on top. So I want some of that fun color. So let's get started and find out what color or what paper I'm gonna choose to do this. The surface I'll be using is Lux Archival Professional Sanded Paper. I love this paper. It is acid free, of course, and it takes water beautifully and it stays nice and flat. The sanded surface is excellent. You can get lots of pastel layering with this paper. Now you can buy it in different sizes. I'll be using a sheet of eight by 10. The watercolor I'll be using is a set of 48 watercolors by Mai Lang. I think I'm saying that right. Someone told me how to say it in my last video. It's a beautiful set. I love the colors. They're vibrant. It even comes with some metallic colors. And I just really happen to love the vibrancy of these colors. It comes with one of these little color charts and it's pretty affordable. It's around $30 on Amazon and that's a really great price for watercolors of this quality. Again, 48 beautiful colors. I will have links to all of the products I talk about in the description of my video here. The reference image is from unsplash.com. I'll have a clickable link to this image. However, I did crop it um, to a more pleasing composition. If you're a patron of mine, you will get the cropped version in my Patreon post, but you guys will also see it as I paint. So now I have some water, of course. I have some paper towels, and just for control as to how much water is on my brush. And I have a few different brushes. I prefer to use a larger brush. I'm not trying to get in here with watercolor and, and paint little teeny tiny leaves or anything. I'm trying to get broad, loose, impressionistic strokes of color for an underpainting that's going to have an influence on my final painting. I get the questions all the time. Why do you do an underpainting? It really can create an impressionistic beginning and give you a direction and an inspiration to get started when you're painting. So I just dipped my brush in some water. Just so you know, the brush I used was one very similar to the smallest in this set that you can find on dickblick.com. It's like five bucks for all three brushes. Nice cheap brushes are really good for doing underpaintings. So I think with this one, I'm gonna get a deep, a deep uh, violet red and purple right here. And I'm gonna use um, a pretty good paint to water ratio. I don't want this too drippy right now, and I want it to be a little bit uh, dark. So I'm, I'm kind of mixing the purple 
what's it called? Fresh purple and violet red. And it's gonna have those warm undertones. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush and I'm going to hold it in a really loose way. I can tell I can already get this darker. What I'm doing is I'm giving the suggestion of this kind of evergreen tree. And um, you can make your strokes um, a little bit kind of sideways sometimes because that's how the trees typically grow. And this one actually has some branches that are, um, boy, it's really busy out there on the road. I always talk about, I'm on a busy road. My husband and I, we hope to move. Um, we have some property where we're building, but um, uh, it's we're not there yet. <laughs> and it's nice and quiet out there. And I'm building a new Monet Cafe studio. So uh, hopefully that will happen one of these days. So I think I even want a little bit more water. I want it to be a little more drippy grabbing both those colors again. I know that there's gonna be some more darks like towards the center. There's a lot of uh, darks down in here, so I'm getting a little bit more of that dark purple. Trees are typically darker in at the, the towards the trunks. They get really um, dark because there's a lot of things congregating there. Now I'm going to get a little bit more of that rosy color and um, make it just a little darker. And this doesn't have to be exactly like the tree or anything. We're just getting in some shapes and um, inspiration and getting um, getting the, the um, just the concept of the tree and the energy of the tree. So that's a lot of fun there. Okay. Now I have me some nice, I love these, I love these watercolors. They are just so vibrant and pretty. Um, now I got some darks over in here. And down in this area, um, I've, I know I've got my little reddish colored tree here. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do first is get some of that in. The great thing about watercolor is you can just let the water flow and have fun. So let me see what color. I might wanna get one of these magenta colors. I know the tree is gonna be red, so I'm tempted. <laughs> I think I'll try this magenta color. Let me see which one it is. Maybe that's a little bit too... I know you can't see what I'm doing. It's a little, one of them I just tried was a little too cool. All right, I think I've got one that'll work. And I'm sorry my easel is shaking. I hope when I get in the new Monet Cafe that um, I will be able to um, have an easel that is stationary. I have a lot of things I wanna do. I never mean to sound like I'm complaining, <laughs> but uh, I do have some wish list things. And I gotta tell you guys, that's the beauty of um, my Patreon group. I'm so grateful any of you who are patrons of mine, you have really caused Monet Cafe to keep going over the years. I'm telling you, I sound like the mailman, you know how they say through rain and flood and what literally through flood <laughs> um, because um, my husband and I have been through so many challenges, um, taking care of loved ones who've had cancer, the loss of loved ones, my mama, so lots of things, um, and uh, and I keep on trucking because of my faith in the Lord and the good Lord's grace, and also because of the support of Mona, of my patrons on my Patreon page who find me often right here on Monet Cafe. Okay, so I'm gonna get one of these darks. Um, I think what I'm gonna do. Often you can mix some colors to get a good dark. I don't wanna go with black, that's boring, but I'm gonna get some darks in some of these areas in here. I think I'm gonna mix maybe this deep hooker's green, maybe with that. Um, usually you can mix complements and it'll neutralize if you get a neutral color, but often you can mix a green, a red, and a blue and get a pretty good dark. So let me try, I think I got that right. So let me try I think I'm gonna try this Hooker's Green and that, uh, actually, oh, that Prussian Blue. Hooker's Green and Prussian Blue. I think those are gonna make a nice, nice dark. Let's give it a try. I'll see if I can hold this up here and show you. Yeah, and I need to, uh, I need to add something to that. Maybe this purple here. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a nice dark, isn't it? A little more purple. Look at that, pretty, pretty. I love that. Okay, so I'm gonna get that um, a little bit more diluted. It's pretty thick right now. 
I actually have a little section that's more diluted. Oh yeah, that's so pretty. A little more diluted, and I have one that's a little more, um, more paint to water ratio. So what I'm doing in here is I'm just coming in here, and I'm just scumbling in some of these these dark colors in here. Just kind of where I see the darks. And they mix so beautifully. Look at that. That's the neat thing about watercolor. They just start blending and mixing. Now I'm going to get more of the um, really dark. Less water. And I'm looking over here. I'm looking at my, my edited uh, study. And I'm looking at my study I did. And I'm looking at um, my uh, reference image at the same time. All right, so now I'm squinting my eyes and I'm seeing these darks. I just lightened this up with a little bit of water and there's a little trail back in there. So I see that it's right in there. I'm not gonna try to paint it, but I'm just giving myself an indication of that. And I'm gonna take some of this dark, uh, I gotta remember Prussian blue, hooker's green and purple. And I'm going to get into a little bit more dark um, Remember, I'm going to be adding pastel to this, so I don't have to get too crazy with it, with getting everything just right. But this is just to remind me that there'll be some dark somewhere in the centers of the tree. I find that when I do watercolor underpaintings with pastel, they're usually kind of popular. I think people are just kind of curious about it. And, uh, and they're fun. Oh my goodness, they're so much fun. All right, now I think I am going to get maybe some of these sienna colors back here, but I don't want them to be too warm yet because I'm going to um, add the, the real pretty warm colors with the um, pastels. Let's see, I think that's a sienna. I'm doing a sienna and kind of a cool red, I think. I'm just experimenting. All right, here we go. So this is kind of warm, but I'm giving an idea of where this one tree is, right back here. It comes up a little higher than halfway, just right here. I need a little more water. And um, I like how in my, my little study, I had some of these kind of um, taller looking. And they're kind of coming down into this area. I'll get some more of these sienna colors back in here. They're getting a little more neutralized because I don't want them to uh, steal the show. My, my show stoppers are gonna be these trees right here. And then I do have some nice greens going on back in here, but I think what I'm gonna do is get a, um, maybe a little bit more, I'm gonna keep this cooler because I'm gonna add warm colors. I think I'll get maybe some of this color um, and just uh, lighten it up a bit for my trees back in here because I can add other colors with pastels and I've just got all these neat little things happening here. It's just a little guide, a little road map for some trees that are all just kind of layered on top of each other. And I'll start developing them more as I go along. Now what I'm doing is I'm mixing some of the colors that are already on my palette together instead of adding new colors and what it's doing is it's neutralizing those colors, so they're not gonna stand out quite as much as some of the other ones. And um, it's kind of lightening them too, which is what happens when things go into the distance. Fun, fun, fun. And did I mention that this is fun? <laughs> it really is. Okay, so I think I'm gonna come in here. I've got just kind of some separation here. I'm gonna add a little bit more of my um, pretty magenta that I had. Because this one is my, my important one. One that's really the main focal point. Yeah, those magentas with that purple worked really nicely. And I think that's what I was loving in the little uh, photo edited um, study that I had. I'm going over my red tree, but that's okay. Was um, that little bit of that magenta just peeking through. Oh my gosh. And guess what? Purple and orange are kind of like complementary colors. So by putting this purple down in this foreground tree, when I add the pretty orangey colors on top, um, 
it's just going to really pop and look so pretty together. I wanted to point out at the beginning stages here that much of what you lay down early on with watercolor is going to lighten up quite a bit. Watercolor lightens up. And you'll notice the more water that I add, I start just having fun with it, um, it is going to lighten up even more. We've got gravity working. The water is going to... Uh, when I start adding the colors in the sky, it's going to drip down. So you'll see me do a little trick at the end to actually make that work in my favor. All right, here we go. Back to the lesson. See how it just makes this so impressionistic? And see how I can go right over the purple? This Lux Archival definitely works beautiful, beautifully with um, watercolor. All right, you see how we got that going on now? We got our main trees. We got a few distant trees happening. We got a little bit of background, a little bit of dark, and now I'm gonna start working on that middle ground. And I'm gonna keep this, even though my reference image had a lot of detail. It had little uh, me, uh, middle ground mountain with lots of little trees. Then it had a huge mountain in the background, snow-capped mountain. And um, I liked it more simple. I'm keeping this a little bit loose and abstract. This one right here is the turkey blue. I have never heard of turkey blue. I liked this set because most of the colors are named by their traditional color names, you know, like Prussian blue, um, Payne's gray, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue. But this turkey blue, I had never heard of turkey blue before. I think it's this color right here. Look at that color. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I think I'm gonna tone it down a little bit with maybe that ultramarine color. I'm sneaking in some of these um, blues that are behind here. And I think I'm gonna probably add a little bit more of some magenta purples back here as well. Uh, but this is a good way to get started. I'm using the sides of my brush and just kinda putting things in a general place, nothing too specific. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to bring my strokes up here like this. I'm just kind of bringing them into the tree a little bit. Give a little influence of that color. And it does, it pulls up the color a little bit. So be careful if you do that, because I just sort of messed that up. All right, I think I'll get a little bit more. This is kind of a greenish blue. Oh yeah, that's pretty too. Do you see how this is just fun? And all this is is a way to get started with your painting. Um, have a guide and, and play, have some fun. It's so fun to play with color, oh my goodness. So I'm just gonna let that kind of mix together. Just doing kind of some broad strokes in here. And then I'll get that pretty blue mountain in the background. Now some of these is, are too light right here, but I can fix that. Okay, some of that purple in there. Fun, fun, fun. And then I'm going to go up higher with my pretty blue um, like the uh, background mountains. I want to see which one is the sky blue. I think it's this one right here. Sky blue. It's right here. And yeah, it is a sky blue. That's a very pretty blue. And now this mountain kind of comes here. It goes down and then up a little bit. I'm going to get my shape in and then I'll come back and develop some of the color again. All right, so now that sky is, uh, I don't, it's light, but I don't want it that light. I want to give something up there. And let me see, what am I going to do? I wish I could do kind of like just a little pale, pale. How about I do a lavender pink? And pink, And it'll connect these two. So I've got kind of a, a magenta pink and I added a little rose red to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it really watery. And I think what's going to happen is, let's see how I think, <laughs> is... It's gonna make the blue that I put on the sky stand out even more. Um, things are usually darker up in the topper, topper, <laughs> top part of the um, heavens, and it gets lighter as you get uh, down closer to the horizon. So I'm just adding some water to my brush, and I'm gonna let that kind of drip down into the, the mountain back there. So, and then I might just kind of scumble the two together a little bit. 
think I'll add a little bit more of my little mountain color because it kind of disappeared. I'm speeding up this last part of the watercolor underpainting just a bit and I want to give you guys a little bit more information about doing a watercolor underpainting. Watercolor dries lighter than when you apply it. So you can already see that my second level of trees is quite a bit lighter. It also on this Lux Archival and with watercolor paper, colors tend to just blend and bleed into one another. So you can see my big main tree, a lot of the teals that I added um, have shrunk my large tree, but that's okay. I have so much ability to go back and add. Um, so you're gonna see me do that in just a minute. I also added just a little bit of green, kind of just to distinguish where some of the other background trees were. Now you can see how I'm going in with some thicker to paint, paint to water ratio, more paint than water. And you can see how it's getting in those nice darks. And if you're a newbie to underpaintings and especially watercolor underpaintings, I mean, it looks kind of like a big mess. You're like, really, would you start a painting this way? But the reasoning is multiple. One is that it creates that impressionistic loose beginning that already has some exciting color. And even if you do put your pastels on top and cover a majority of it, it still has an influence. The, the underlying color really does still have an influence. But you can see how this is getting very drippy. It's all kind of, um, looks like it's melting into uh, all the colors into one another. So I'm gonna show you a little trick. And gravity was working against me. All my colors were dripping down and that's why I kept losing some of the trees. But not to worry, this is something I did, oh, I, I can't remember how long ago it was, but I thought, you know what? Let me flip this upside down and let some of this color just drip and have fun and so this is a really neat way to allow trees to grow upward by flipping your paper upside down and now you'll see how the colors start to blend and bleed into one another and don't worry yours will probably do exactly what mine does they all kind of start melding into each other but it really does create a nice loose soft beginning i think you'll see how soft it looks once i turn it back over I really loved the soft end result. And I may have spent more time than I needed on some of the beginning stages, but I really enjoyed the process. And I preach that a lot on this channel, is that art is not just about the end product, but it's about the joy in the journey as well. And now once my loose underpainting is dry, I will begin to add soft pastels and I've chosen some beautiful autumn colors. Of course, you know, the traditional colors of autumn, but I have also chosen some more unconventional colors as well that I'll even add to the end. Some purples and uh, some magentas and pinks. And here you can see once the underpainting is dry, I mean, look at that loose color and how it's all just blending into each other. It does dry, like I said, um, quite a bit lighter, but I just loved how all these colors worked together. And now I'm ready to paint. I am speeding up the pastel painting portion, but I'm gonna give you commentary as I work. And as I mentioned in my last video, you can slow-mo um, any of my videos. There's a little, uh, when you're on YouTube, there's a little gear icon kind of at the bottom right of every video. If you click it, you can choose the speed and you can slow it down. So you can watch this uh, almost in real time if you choose to. Now what I'm doing, I got my darks in on top of my nice underpainting. I'm using a little pastel blender. This is made by Pan Pastels and I just really love these little blenders. They're lots of fun and I wipe them off as I'm working with them to change colors. Now I'm adding some of that gorgeous purple. Uh, and if you're a patron of mine, you will get my color notes that I'm making over to the left. I'll include that on the Patreon post. And my patrons, you're also going to get slower content. I'm going to give you this footage um, slowed down with a little more commentary. And I think maybe you can see that the underpainting served definitely as a guide. I, I don't have to think as much because the underpainting already set the, uh, the large shapes for me. And it also set the stage for my color palette. I'm choosing as my initial pastel layers some of the colors that I chose with the watercolor. Notice it's very cool. I'm even using some of these magentas. So a lot of blues, purples, and magentas. By the way, that's a piece of pipe foam 
foam insulation. I've used two blending tools in this video, literally the stuff you can buy at the hardware store. And I used it to soften up those mountains in the distance to make them feel really far away. Now I'm using kind of a neutral um, earthy magenta color and some pink to give an indication of those really distant autumn trees. On the background mountain there you can see there are some autumn trees that are very far away. So I'm just suggesting them. I'm not making the color quite as brilliant. I know I'm going to be having some greens in the foreground trees. So now I'm using really neutral greens to sprinkle in on those middle ground mountains. And the way that color works in nature is things cool off the further away they are. So that's why I use kind of those cooler greens on the very distant hills. And mountains, they're so far away, they really cool off. They're often blue or purple. And so we're really getting that feeling of distance already with the distant mountains. Now I'm just kind of suggesting in that one tree that's in the front. As you can see, it's a little brighter and uh, lighter in value and I'll develop it more. But I'm getting in some of that warmth now, and it really is looking neat with the cooler tones behind it. So much about pastel painting has to do with layering, and I often talk about layering your values. That means the scale of dark to light. Um, layering them, your darker values first, and gradually layering your middle and lighter values last. And the reason for that is because that's how the nature of things are in towards the inner parts of that tree uh, is going to be dark. And the lightest parts of the tree where the sunlight is hitting or light is just hitting or reflecting uh, are going to be the middle and lighter elements. So I like to describe it as we're building the tree and the elements from the inside out. And someone mentioned in a comment recently that that really clicked with them. It, it made sense. And there actually is an advantage to watching this in a sped up version because you can kind of see it come to life and see these principles really work and go, oh, I get it. I did need to add a little bit more dark um, to that tree, again, building it from the inside out, that largest tree. I noticed it had um, just some darker areas in closer to the trunk. And I'm going to gradually add the lighter needles and branches onto that. So it's really like a dance. You know, you're just kind of working it and analyzing it. And once you know some of these principles, though, um, you can have confidence that what you're doing is going to work. I remember when I was first painting, a lot of my challenge was not having the confidence to know that what I was painting was even going to work because these uh, pastel paintings and many paintings from other mediums, they go through this um, awkward stage and you feel a lack of confidence. You feel like, am I even doing this right? But that's the way it's supposed to look during these stages. We really are, again, building things from the inside out and it takes a little while before they start to materialize and become what you are actually trying to paint. Now, I am going to say what I say in a lot of my videos. I have the advantage of watching my video footage. Uh, I know not everyone films themselves while they paint. I do encourage it to do that. It, it will help you learn. But I see so many stages while I'm doing these voiceovers that I like. Um, some of the three quarter, I would say it's usually around three quarters of the way done. And um, I know if you're listening to this, Andrea, one of my patrons, she has to chuckle at me saying this and doing this all the time. <laughs> But maybe one day I'll I'll really stop and wait a day or so before I add any more pastel and, and I might decide to let it be. So I liked this stage. It was really loose. If I'd have just developed the ground a little bit more. Um, but I like the final too. But I, a part of it is that I just have fun. Now I'm adding some pinks in here. And this is what I was saying at the beginning about getting exploratory with color and having some fun. I think some of the unusual colors... Um, really make it pop and come to life. There's some magentas in that large tree as well. Now I'm going to slow up here and zoom in a bit to show you my addition of purple. I love to use purple to make colors pop. I wish I knew the 
uh, brand and the color number of this purple I'm using. I really like it. You can tell I've, I've worn it down to almost nothing. So it might be a Mount Vision, actually. Mount Vision has some really nice purples. But can you see how that purple and some of those magentas I added before really give that a fun look to this autumn tree? I'm using kind of a lavender, light lavender, pinkish purple, and some blues to lighten the mountain at the tops and further away and to soften that edge between mountain and sky. And while I finish up here, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the underpainting. And you might say, why did you even do an underpainting? Most of it is covered up. Uh, like I said before, though, there is a slight influence of the underpainting in little areas that might be peeking through, and your color does appear a little bit different on an underpainting than it would if you just painted on the cream or the almost white surface of the pastel paper. It also inspired me. The color got me going. It gave me an idea of where I wanted to head with some of the underlying colors, even when I laid them down with pastel, uh, making some little tree branches here with this Prismacolor new pastel. But um, the underpainting, I believe, is very, very beneficial to artists for many of the reasons I've already stated. Just to recap, and I'm going to have these written in the description of the video. So why an underpainting? One, it's loose and painterly. If you like that painterly style, it's a great way to start. Two, you establish your shapes and your values early on. Three, you can add color excitement, those underlying colors that will peek through and motivate you while you paint. Four, you actually have a guide. You have a roadmap. Your painting is, you're not just starting in the middle of nowhere. And five, it is fun. I really enjoy underpaintings. I'm wrapping it up here and I'll show you the final in just a second. But remember, if you're a patron of mine, you'll be getting my color notes. I'll be giving you on the Patreon page a slower version of this and lots of other goodies. My cropped reference image. So God bless my patrons. I have to shout out to you guys because you're why I keep these free videos coming to Monet Cafe. Here's a close up of some of the final marks and the final which I have in my Etsy shop. I hope you guys learned a lot. You always bless me with your comments. So please leave me a comment. And if you recreate from any of my tutorials, I love it when you tag me. You can tag me on Instagram at Susan Jenkins Artist, on Facebook at The Art of Susan Jenkins. And as always, God bless and happy painting.